Hero. 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 What is a hero? Person of distinguished courage or ability. An object of extreme admiration and devotion. Admired for their brave deeds and noble qualities. Courage. 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 Honesty. 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 Selflessness. 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 Courage. Honesty. Selflessness. These are our hometown heroes. Hello and welcome to Hometown Heroes. I'm Wendy Ben. Welcome back to Hometown Heroes. Ever growing up, racing is pretty much all they know. And where does that love of racing come from? Quite often, it's from the man they proudly call dad. Take a look and you'll see why. When we asked David who his hero was, he said, Well, without a doubt, it's my dad. How does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel good because I know how much he thinks of John Wayne, you know. The reason being is he's been there not necessarily just in my racing world, but in, uh, in everything prior to that. When I was young and playing baseball or football, he was uh, the coach, he was the number one fan, he was always there to tell me what I was doing right and definitely what I was doing wrong. You know, he's got a lot of, a lot of heroes in his mind, but for him to say that about me, that's, that's awesome. Uh, been my hero and, and definitely been, been my biggest fan, my biggest help. Did you ever try and steer him away from racing, knowing how tough it can be? We grew up as a family enjoying sports, and it just so happened, I guess, the sport of racing was the number one sport in the family. And so when David turned 10 and 11, he started getting away from some of the sports that he was actually pretty good at. You know, there one time, I, I kind of dreamed we're a Georgia Tech family, and I kind of dreamed of him throwing a touchdown pass at Bobby Dodge Stadium in Atlanta. That would have been a, a neat deal, but I tell you what, I wouldn't go back and change any of it the way it's worked out. But when he decided he wanted to race, it was getting close to Christmas that year, and I said, David, you'll be 16 at Christmas if you want to forget this racing deal, because I knew I was fixing to have to, you know, pick up and move the whole family and get away from our home down there. I said, I'll buy you a brand new Corvette for Christmas. You'd be 16 years old, a brand new Corvette. And he said, Daddy, I don't want the Corvette, I want to race. So that was enough to me. I, I didn't ask him anymore after that day. I didn't ever ask him again. What are some of the sacrifices that you can think of? Well, a lot of things. We, we moved our whole family from Atlanta to Charlotte uh, four or five years ago, and that's something that's, uh, as I get older and I look at it, and that's a pretty brave move to just pick up and move 400 miles north just to help your son and, and his racing career. But you know, the things that we've sacrificed, and probably as much as anything else has been a lot of our family time, I can kind of remember um, telling David's family back home, the grandmas and his aunts and uncles, uh, look, you know, we're going to race 50 weeks out of the year. We'll come home for Christmas. And oh, by the way, when we come home for Christmas, don't give him something for Christmas that's not race related. He needs a Craftsman toolbox and he needs a caster camera gauge and he needs a tire pyrometer. Your wife Beverly told me a little story about this 1964 truck behind you that you actually had to sell it at one point and then able to buy it back. I've got a college, old college roommate named Stephen Lee. I remember calling Stephen one day and I said, I need some money for David's racing account. And I said, I want it back one day, but what about loan me a little money so I can put it in David's racing account? So he did that. And it left with the understanding that it was more of a loan, a collateral on a loan, than it was me selling the truck. It's kind of hard to, to be the, uh, the boss and the father at the same time. I called a friend of mine, DeWitt Pascal, and I said, DeWitt, if David wanted to race and we bought him a car, would you take him and race him just because of what you're talking about? And he said, absolutely, I'll race him. And I can remember him telling me on one occasion, he said, look, you'd get your grandstand ticket and take some of these other parents with you and go up to the grandstands. We'll have a good time down here. And it was all about racing and having fun back in those early days, you know, when you're 11, 12 years old. We felt like it was important to teach David, you know, certainly family values and work ethics and racing ethics. And somewhere on that list, there was something about leading laps and winning races. 
But what about away from the racetrack? How has he impacted you in your personal life to help you become a man? Well, I'm 22 years old and I still got to call dad before I do anything, before I buy anything. And, and in the end, whether you like it or not, most of the time he's right. What is the best piece of, of advice you've given David? I've, I've kind of always believed that um, good things come to good people. You got to believe that things can be the way you want them to be. And you got to work hard, you know. Um, again, nobody's ever told David it'd be easy. Have you thanked him for everything he's done and being a hero in your life? You know, I talk to him every single day, but, but I don't call him and, and say, you know, thank you enough. I don't say I love you enough. I call him and, and if I'm in Texas and we qualify in the top 10 and he's uh, a thousand miles away in, in North Carolina, he's happy, he's thrilled and, and I think that's probably the biggest thank you that I can give him is, uh, is just to stay focused and try to do my best and, and that'll make him happy. You know, we tell him that every day, David, you get up, you count your blessings because, you know, you can count your race cars, you can count your points, you can count your laps and all that later. But you count your blessings every day because this is absolutely a miracle. You can see how proud Ken is of David and the sacrifices that he made. A funny little story he told me is that when they desperately needed some more money, he asked his wife Beverly if he can sell her china. Uh, obviously that didn't go over too well. And needless to say, she still has that china. Stay tuned. There's more hometown heroes to come.